Well, it's all been a bit mad recently, what with all the trouble with the uh, logic analyzers blowing up and uh, lack of system disks and uh, yeah, yeah, all been a, a bit stressful for me. So I wanted to do something a little bit non-taxing. So what we've got to look at today is this. Let's open the box. So what have we got? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. We've got some boards. We've got quite a lot. Well, we've got quite a few bits of, uh, well, I'm even not sure what they are. They look like, uh, yeah, they're headers of some kind, some headers. Uh, we have some capacitors and some resistors and uh, a DC power jack in there. What have we got here? We've got some more headers. And we've got some quite big, beefy looking uh, IC sockets there. But what's most interesting is we've got this RC2014 backplane. Now... Uh, where do I start with this? Well, basically what this is, it's a kit Z80 computer. And the reason that I bought it is because I wanted us to use the logic analyzer that we've got to try and explode some of the um, I.O. pins. Now, um, where's, where's the Z80 processor? Uh, I think it's that one there, probably the big one, I'm going to say that. So here's the Z80 processor. And it's, you know, it's one of the early processors that kicked off all the home computing stuff. Uh, quite a famous Z80. Um, can't really claim to know much about microprocessors. Uh, back in the day when this came out for the first time uh, around, I was, uh, you know, I was more kind of interested in mechanical stuff or climbing or cars and stuff like that. So I was never particularly interested in home computers and stuff like that. When I started to get interested in electronics or kind of more professionally, you know, I moved straight into microcontrollers. I'm not saying that, um, you know, microprocessors had the day by that time, but, you know, there was, uh, why bother with a microprocessor chip when, uh, uh, when you can buy a microcontroller that's got all the RAM and the I.O. and the peripherals built into it. Uh, so for those who don't know the difference, this is a Z80 microprocessor. And it's different than a microcontroller because if you just get a Z80 chip and plonk it on a board, it, it won't do very much. It needs a lot of external peripherals to make it work. So, you know, to make this kind of thing work, we're going to need, a, ah, well, it's going to need a power supply. It's going to need some RAM. It's going to need some ROM. And it's also going to need some, um, I'm guessing, some address decoding for the RAM and ROM. Now, I'm not going to start explaining how Z80s work for a very good reason. I don't know, but maybe we'll find out. But the idea is, um, what you can do is you can build this thing and then you can plug a terminal into it and I think you can do things like run basic and stuff like that. And it's expandable and, yeah, it's just basically uh, a little homebrew computer, which is the kind of thing I guess people might have been building in the late 70s and 80s and stuff like that. So they, say, they give you this thing, which uh, I think they say very clearly is that they call it the assembly guide, but they say, yeah, this is, please note, this is not a, an assembly guide. Um, it's not a, it's not a, you know, a blow by blow by blow instruction for how you build this thing. I think there's a lot of information available on the web. Um, I'm guessing this is a number of it. It's the RC2014. Um, and as I said, I think it consists of, um, I'm guessing this is a backplane, and then depending on um, what you want to do with the computer, you can slot in the microprocessor card, or you can slot in a RAM card, or a ROM card, or an I.O. card. So you can, you can build this computer up like that. I'll put some links in in the show notes and other people's videos who are, you know, they're more expert on these things than me and can probably talk about it and tell you all the interesting things that I no doubt can't tell you. But all I'm planning to do today is I'm going to try and solder it together and you're welcome to join me. So I bought this computer kit from a company called Tinder and they've got lots of, uh, well, hundreds of different types of kits on there. Um, and as I said, it, it, it came from Nottingham, um, it's, got, it's got it on here, uh, it came from Nottingham, uh, 
NG93EY United Kingdom, that's where it's been shipped from. And I don't know if the, the idea of this kit, if it was a spin-off from somebody at Nottingham University. Uh, again, I'm going to put some links on. Nottingham University have done some absolutely tremendous uh, videos about the history of early computing and, you know, the guys at, um, was it Acorn who developed the BBC Micro and stuff like that. I was recently on holiday and I think I spent the entire week on, uh, on YouTube looking at the... Uh, history of early computers and, and the development of stuff like the Z80. So again, this is described as the RC2014 Homebrew Z80 computer kit. But I did buy the full Monte digital I.O. module, yes please, so they supplied that. And uh, even though it's come from Britain, it's described here in dollars, quantity one, and the total price was 103 dollars 29 so what's that is that about 90 quid in old money i'm not sure i don't know what the exchange rate is so it's not exactly um cheap but to be honest i got my uh, I, I got my eye on this for some time and I, I you know i really wanted to have a go with um i wanted to have a go with a microprocessor you know a basic microcomputer because i thought it would be really good at some point to uh to plug the logic analyzers into it and have a look at some of the activity on the you know the address buses and the data buses and the address decoding i thought that might be interesting to do uh, and it would also so fill in some gaps in my knowledge as again because i know bugger all about z80s yeah although it does say quite clear this is an assembly guide um i do think that um they could have provided some slightly better instructions with this i mean this kit was you know it was pretty much a hundred pounds and you know, I realize the economics of building kits and stuff like that but for you know for a hundred pounds they could have given me some full-size um, circuit diagrams because I can't read these the writing's far too small for me you know it would have it would have been helpful if they'd done that wouldn't it um, uh, the pictures are are pretty rubbish now of course most people are uh, they're going to go to some website and i don't know if there's a website here it doesn't does it mention a website yeah maybe it is rc2014 so maybe what i should do is before i get too much into this is just see see what we can find on the rc2014 website.co.uk because it says um, up-to-date information and full-size schematics can be found here well, you know, bully for you, it saved you printing out some stuff for me, didn't it? So, let's have a look what we have got. So, we've got a, we've got a backplane board here, and we've got a lot of separate modules. Does it say what the modules are on here? Alright, so this is our digital I.O. module, so I'm assuming this is all the bits to, uh, well, to do digital I.O. I suppose it's got an input and output port on it. Uh, has it got, oh, it's got some LEDs as well, so maybe we can make some LEDs flash at some point. So... That's the uh, that's the digital I/O port. Um, what else have we got? So let's have a look at what's in here. Uh, let's unwrap these. Uh, I need a knife. Yeah, that that's not a knife. None of that EEV blood rubbish. This is what I call a knife. Now this is a, a British Forces issue, and it's a, a standard uh, Golok. And for those playing along at home, you can actually uh, shave with it if you actually want to. Oh, I'm going to be walking around all day with a bald arm. You can't quite beat uh, uh, Japanese whetstones. You can forget all your diamond homes. You can't beat Japan Japanese whetstones. That's the way to go. Uh, right, okay. Uh, what have we got? Right, because we've got the back plane board. We looked at that, didn't we? Let's have a look at what's in here. Got lots of little boards. Got no idea what that is. It is a board. It would be helpful if... Ah, oh, right, it says it's a... 62256 RAM board and that's pin one. So what else have we got here? We've got looks like we've got another RAM board. Is that the same? Hmm. Some better labels would be really useful yeah i don't know i don't know if that says ram or not unfortunately uh mm, yeah don't know got yeah got some of them we've got uh another one all oh, right this is the z80 cpu board that says z80 on it um 
it looks like there's some I don't know some writing on here let's bring you in a bit so what's this it's a PCB it says 62256 RAM there's PIM1 I don't particularly like the way they've actually um, you know screen printed I mean they've screen, screen printed this uh, RC2014 on it and they've put the website address but um, yeah I mean you could have actually used that to print something useful on it I mean yes I know it's an RC2014 but I don't know it just seems a waste of real estate I mean you, you printed that on it and then you've, you've took the words RAM right up into the corner there and in fact you've actually laid the board out quite badly in some ways because the uh, the lettering the uh, is stenciled over the uh, uh, solder resist etc which is yeah it's just very how you doing we've got something else I think that says it's a ROM board again they've chosen to actually of all the places they could have written the word ROM board again they've chose to uh, put it right over the top of um, over some form of header connector maybe this was laid out by a child does this one do oh this is a serial IO board which is I thought what the other thing was I don't know I'm guessing this is what you use to interface it with uh, the terminal because uh, what you actually use is you use something like a laptop running hyper terminal to actually talk to the Z8 because this has got a Max uh, a Max 232 device on it um, I haven't actually seen on here um, a proper serial connector although it has got um, it's got the um, an FTDI header there or something so again not exactly sure how that works um, I guess we'll find out what we've got here uh, oh right that's the Z80 main board uh, because it says so in little letters Z80 so they've obviously chosen again to put that under the chip um, rather than putting it to the left or the right of it uh, again they've just wasted all the board real estate with this RC2014 I don't normally slag things off but um, yeah I guess I get a bit annoyed when I've paid reasonable amounts of money for stuff I mean I'm sure the guy the, the guy who does this is maybe expert at computers and Z80s but it's certainly not been laid out by somebody who knows anything about board layout uh, what have we got here we've got uh, another little board um, it's got a push button on does it tell me what it does it's reset again I think it says clock on it but given that uh, all the lettering is basically been put over the um, drill holes for the through hole lead components it's pretty illegible uh, so that's good isn't it we've got lots of uh, pin header here so we have to figure out what to do with that we've got some IC sockets these are the ICs uh, got some more pin header here got some decoupling capacitors um, got an LED we've got a crystal in there yeah got various things so okay I said I wasn't going to talk today but I've just done quite a lot of talking there haven't I sorry I lied I've just gone to the website which is www.rc2014 .co.uk and they have got some more detailed assembly guides and again I would actually give a little bit of a hint here that if you're going to do an assembly guide perhaps it's a good idea to actually show um, a picture of the thing assembled you know that actually would be quite useful rather than just putting a, a resistor with an arrow saying points there if you actually just took a picture of the board assembled I would know where to put the resistor whereas this it just yeah um, I mean I can see that this actual circuit board here this looks like it's not a proper photograph it's actually a, it's, it's a render from the CAD package that they've used I mean would it really have killed you to have put a, an actual picture in yeah obviously it would have killed them because there doesn't seem to be many pictures full Monty assembly guide let's have a look at that one again no no pictures just uh, just CAD uh, rendered CAD drawings okay there's a picture there you see that just a picture of the thing assembled is worth actually probably more than um, all the uh, all the rendered images and stuff like that that's actually far more useful to actually see how the thing goes together lots of information on here if you want to actually have a go at making your own uh, so it looks like you don't have to buy the whole of the kit there's a 
some here where you can build your own backplane with a Vero board. Right, we've got everything we need. We've got soldering iron. Got a board, got a picture. Well, it doesn't look as though there's actually very many components that actually go on this uh, back plane. So I don't really think it matters at all what order we build things in. So we'll just stuff some components on. I think what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll actually just use up some of the bigger things first to uh, you know create room so we can see what we're doing. So what should we need? We need a push switch, and we'll put we'll put these uh, we'll put these female vertical headers in. Oh, my blue tack's disappeared. I always like to hold things in with blue tack when I'm doing soldering like this. And because I've been talking so long, my soldering iron has decided to go into low power mode. I should probably put my uh, fume extractor on. I'm doing a little bit of soldering. Isn't it funny when you're soldering how the uh, the fumes um, always pull towards you? I don't know if the heat rises from your body and it creates an updraft, but... It's just funny when you're doing a bit of soldering, it always, the fumes always, I mean, they just do, they, they definitely always pull towards your face. I haven't really got any proper extraction in here. I've got one of these little, um, one of these little fan things that pulls it through uh, a carbon filter. They're totally useless, but the, the only good thing you can say about them is that it can blow the fumes away from you. Where's it gone? Let's see if I can find it. Okay, that's got two of them soldered in now. What we'll do is we'll bring you back when I've done the rest. Okay, well, we've got all those headers installed now. Let's just have a quick look under the uh, magnifier. Yeah. They look mainly good. There's a couple of dodgy joints. Good enough. What shall we do next? You know what? I think I'll put the uh, reset button on. You can't beat a nice reset push button. Well, this doesn't go in very easily. In fact, it looks like it's the wrong pitch. Does it go the other way up? No, it definitely doesn't go that way up. Well, I've just installed this reset push button here, this little black thing. And uh, it looks like the legs are splayed out to the side. So basically, the, um, the whole spacings that they've used on the PCB doesn't quite fit this switch. Um, I don't know, I mean it's not out by a million miles but it's certainly out by enough that it didn't fit in easily and yeah, the legs are splayed out sideways so there's another little boob there with the uh, with the layout. Either that or at some point in production maybe the original switch became unavailable and uh, they've had to change to a different switch. So we're going to have a go at just installing this power connector and uh, yeah this one's a bit how you doing as well, the holes are, what's that about? <laughs> A millimetre clearance around each of the uh, the pins. That's all quite how you're doing, isn't it? Hello, hello. I'm a mole in the hole. In fact, they've made the holes so big, there isn't actually uh, very much pad left there. I mean, there's more than enough for what this type of application is. But, yeah, come on, if you're going to drill enormous holes like that and through plate them... Um, you know, leave a bit of pad remaining. Come on, throw us a bone. I have to get out the big solder for this one, I think. Well, I'm just looking at this, and there's a, there's a hole here, this U1, uh, and uh, it's got a couple of capacitors next to it. So that's going to be a 5 volt regulator, but it looks as though, again, the regulator is uh, optional with this kit, which I think is probably not such a good idea. I mean, uh, again, this is going to be 5 volts, isn't it, uh, back in the day? and they've given you uh, a power jack here and uh, well five volts isn't a natural power supply to come out of a wall wall is it it's going to be six volts or nine volts or 12. so yeah it's nice to see uh, that they went the extra mile and included um, a 7805 you know it's, it's great that isn't it am i whinging a lot today i'm prepared to believe that i'm whinging a lot you can tell i've had a stressful week but uh I don't know, somebody's going to plug the wrong power jack into there, aren't they? And they're going to fry this thing. Um, and again, it would have been nice if, the, uh, if they'd have just bothered to put a bit of indication on here about the polarisation. 
I mean, everybody knows Centre Jack is positive, apart from the people who don't. Yeah, I'm going to find out about that. I'd rather have a 7805 in there, because I'm not going to run this from 5 volts. Maybe I'll do that. Well, I was going to say this is my power supply regulator box, but it's a bit of a jump overflow. So what have we got there? Oh, there's a, a PIC 16 cf 84 Another PIC, another PIC. Traco. What's that? That's going to be a DC to DC converter. That looks like it could be the fellow... Uh, Hmm, BTU11A, that's a MOSFET, isn't it? I think it is. I don't know what that's doing in here. What are you doing in there? BTU11A. I oh, don't know what you are. I'll have to look you up. Um, more picks. Pick, pick. Uh, 12 volt regulator. 741N. Is that a. Oh, that's a. Hex inverter, yes, yeah, something like that. Smith triggered hex inverter, that's what I'm going for. Uh, LM39, yeah, don't know. Oh god, back in the day. Some piezo sounders. Oh, a little box of goodness, what's in there? Oops, some 74HC logic. How are we getting there? These look, are these 5 volt regulators? Uh, these are 7812s, 12 volt regulators. Come on, must have a 5 volt regulator somewhere. LM2940T, is that a variable voltage regulator? I can't remember. Another pick. Come on. Don't know. Switch mode regulators, another 12 volt regulator. God, what is going on? I think that's a 5 volt regulator, but fully isolated. 3 volt regulator, 24 volt regulator. God, what is happening here? Another 24 volt regulator, 12 volt, 24 volt. Oh, plus 5 and minus 5 voltage regulators. Can you believe it? It's got one 5 volt regulator. I must have had a rush of 5 volt regulators on recently, so uh, it's been used, but I'm guessing it'll do. That was hard work. Got another 5 volt regulator. We've got a new one here, and this is definitely of the uh, vintage flavour. 07 1995, back in the day. Maybe I should use that one. Maybe that'd be more appropriate. 95. Yeah, let's use an LM7805. You know, I've got a feeling that at work tomorrow, I'm going to, somebody's going to need a load of 7805 regulators for a job. Just got that feeling. Mm. Looks like you can link out the regulator if you don't want to use it, but uh, I, I do want to use it um, because I think that'll be more flexible for what I want to do. So let's put in this uh, this vintage LM7805 volt regulator. Does anybody want to guess? No, I've bent the legs. Is uh, is it going to line up with the hole in the circuit board? With that? I don't know. Shall we find out? Let's see. Yeah, pretty well. I, oh, perfect. Back of the net. Well, I've just had some dinner and some red wine, and I'm feeling a bit more chilled out now. So uh, I was thinking I was probably a little bit hard on the uh, the chap who put this uh, kit together, because really he's done an amazing job, hasn't he? Uh, probably done a better job than I would have done the first time round. So we need some uh, we need some capacitors, and uh, what we're going to put in is what we've got in the box. So what have we got? A lot of the capacitors that I've got in stock, though, they're, uh, you know, the higher voltage stuff for valve radios and stuff like that. Yeah, good enough. 100 and a 10. So, to the man in the corner with a wooden leg. Again, my uh, my capacitor collection really just seems to depend on, uh, well, what I can find at um, radio rallies and stuff like that. I very rarely buy components, so, uh, yeah... I always allow a certain amount of uh, imagination. That's a hundred. I'd probably put a bit more in than that if I had one that'd fit in, but I haven't. So, because uh, as I said earlier, most of the capacitors I've got, I've got a much higher voltage rating, so they tend not to be in uh, 
they don't have this lead space in all the ones that I tend to have that are higher than 100 microfarad. Never trust the uh, the legends on these things, is that right? Yeah, ground. The uh, the centre pin is the common, is the zero volts on a 7805 regulator. So uh, just making sure that both the grounds and the capacitors are going that way. Although if I did put them in backwards, it may be semi-exciting. But yeah, probably not that exciting. So here's the little... Uh, 3mm LED we're going to install and uh, yeah just looking at it it's got that kind of a uh, wishy-washy look about it uh, so I'm not expecting great things from this now it's funny uh, back in the day LEDs used to have a nice little uh, flat on the body of them you know just to help you identify um, what the cathode was and uh, well looking at the modern LEDs it's not just this LEDs that flat has become almost uh, impossible to see I think there's a flat there, but um, yeah, it's barely visible. Yeah, I'm afraid the cameras are struggling with that, but uh, yeah, there is a little flat on one side of the plastic housing which identifies the uh, the cathode, but yeah, it's more or less impossible to see. Maybe it's just my eyes that are getting old. So the short leg is going to be the uh, cathode, and uh, but you know what? I've actually been caught out. I did actually once have some LEDs that had defied all convention. Again. I don't know, I think I bought them off eBay, so they were probably of some dubious source, but uh, yeah, that was uh, quite amazing. That installed all these LEDs and found out that uh, they weren't following the normal convention, so I don't need somebody had a bad day at the factory what happened there. All right, let's put one, solder one leg in and then we'll straighten it up. If I had a pound for every LED I'd soldered in the wrong way around, I'd probably have five pounds. I'm getting tired now, cack ended. Terrible soldering skills. Bit out of practice at soldering, really. Most of the soldering that I've uh, I used to do a lot of soldering in the past, this kind of thing, but uh, yeah, not so much recently. And you know, for the last few years I've been kind of more interested in valve radios and big old boat anchors and to be honest, uh, yeah, there's a lot of wire wrapping and post-to-post -post wiring, so I've probably not done a huge amount of PCB work in the last few years. I'm just trying to line up all the excuses for my shit soldering, that's all it is. Give it a last quick visual inspection under my uh, magnifying lens. And if all good, if all's good, I'll bring you back when I power it up. Well, normally I'd power this circuit up using my, uh, you know, my laboratory uh, bench top power supply. Oh, just forgotten something. Oh, we forgot the 100 nano decoupling caps. Bad me, better put them on. Well, I'll carry on with what I was saying. Yeah, um, normally I'd power this up with my laboratory power supply, but I couldn't find any of these uh, DC connectors, these barrel connectors in my in my box of bits. So uh, I think we're just going to go for we're just going to go for broke, and we're just going to plug it in using this. What was it? It was an old Netgear AC to DC adapter, 12 volts at one amp, and I'm sure that'll be uh, that'll be fine. Be fine. No current limiting, so uh, yeah, I mean, let's face it, there's nothing really to go wrong on here, is there? Right, well, let's just power it up now. Worry about the capacitors afterwards. Is it going to work? Yay. Uh, let's just check we've got 5 volts on it. That's surprising, we've got 16 volts going into this thing, so uh, yeah, I wonder if this uh, Netgear power supply has actually got a regulator in it. Maybe it hasn't, maybe it's just a, just a DC, maybe it's just an AC transformer bridge rectifier. I mean, it is on, it's, obviously it's got no load on it, but uh, yeah, I would have thought, I'm surprised it's quite so bad as that. Uh, uh, so what's that? We've got 16 volts 
going in and we've got 4.8 volts coming out a little bit low but uh, yeah good enough let's put those uh, 100 nan capacitors in before we forget I think it was them I, couldn't, I can't even read the markings on these oh yeah it is I think that's 104 okay yeah actually they haven't given me very many well, I'll tell you what we'll put in that case we'll put these capacitors next to the uh, next to the back planes we're actually going to plug in sorry next to the slots we're going to plug in I might go and have a look in the junk box I think I've probably got some more 100 nan capacitors somewhere Next time we'll uh, we'll build up some of the other modules and uh, see if we can get it working. But until next time, bye bye for now. Bye.